One thing I love painting are jewelry boxes, so today we're giving this jewelry box a makeover. I start by taking off any removable hardware. Sometimes when you're working on jewelry boxes, you can't take the hardware off, and that's okay. You're going to figure it out with each project as you go and you'll learn to work around it you know with painters tape and things like that but for this one I can take all the hardware off so I'm gonna work on this jewelry box in pieces and I make sure that I'm very organized through the process because I don't want to lose any of the tiny pieces and I also wanted to show you here that I do number my drawers always that way there's no mix-up when I'm putting them back the first big tip that I want to share here is be careful of what kind of painter's tape you use when you're taping off your fabric. If you use a heavy duty tape and you get it on the jewelry box, depending on what the jewelry box is made of, you can take some of the original finish off um, when you remove the tape. So I use a really, really lightweight tape and I'm very careful. Um, I apply, I double tape this. I apply the lightweight tape to the edges because I don't want to get any of the paint. I don't want it to drip. And the blue tape is used just to protect the fabric. I don't want any like, you know, splats from when I'm painting to hit the fabric. If the jewelry box or the jewelry armoire is has like a really smooth, slippery surface from the original finish, then I'm going to use my bonding primer. In this case, I'm using Stix bonding primer and I just apply two thin coats. I wait three to four hours in between the coats and then you have to wait a whole 24 hours before applying your paint. And this is to make sure that the paint sticks to the surface. And the paint I'm using for this project is Terra Clay Paint by Dixie Bell. It's gonna be Moonbeam, Lanny's Lagoon, and Cerulean Blue. As always, if you check the description box, you can find all the products that I use in my videos. The look that I have in mind for this piece, uh, to achieve the look, I need to use a stippling motion with my brush. I'm just gonna, for this blend, I'm not gonna go back and forth, up and down, crisscross. I'm actually just gonna stipple it, and that's just tapping the brush. Um, if every motion that you use with your hands will give you a different look with your paint so it's really fun when you're experimenting and this is one of my favorite ways to blend especially on a small project i just love the um the results that it gives i've decided i'm gonna stick with this sort of recipe <laughs> it's gonna be laney's lagoon on top um, cerulean blue on the bottom and then in the middle I'm going to use the moonbeam which is like this white just to kind of help them blend together when you add the white it actually it'll give us like two more colors so we'll have our Lanny's Lagoon our cerulean blue and then a lighter version of each color and then the white in the center so really we're using three colors and it's going to look like five colors so this is an easy strategy that I like to use when I'm blending to just add a little bit more like depth and dimension. We're not, and it's, it really is simple because the white just brightens up the original color. So it's not going to change anything drastically. It's just gonna add that extra character. If you haven't noticed already on my channel, I'm always looking for ways to make blending easier to you know make it less complicated because I know it seems like such a complicated process but it's really not if you know what colors to blend together now it's really important to tie the sides in to match the front so where I had Lainey's Lagoon in the front I pull that over to the side and then I know that you know after that I can add my moonbeam and my cerulean blue but I want the sides to look like they're seamless otherwise there's no pattern and it kind of looks like I just splattered a bunch of paint with no rhyme or reason and then I follow that with even the top at the at the top of the jewelry box base there's more of Lainey's Lagoon so I want to make sure that I have that Lainey's Lagoon around it and then I can add my Cerulean into the middle so just by doing the front you're kind of mapping out for the rest of your piece and this is not just for jewelry boxes this is how you can if you don't know where to place your blends, this is how you can do it um, for your furniture too. 
And don't get me wrong, not all pieces of furniture or whatever you're working on is gonna need a pattern. Sometimes it's fun to just go free and go crazy, but for um, the look that I'm going for and that I'm usually going for, I like to have a nice pattern. Here I wanted to show you that I did tape off that top part of the drawer, and that's because when you close the drawers, they sit on top of each other, and I don't want the paint to rub off. So if the paint's not there, it's not gonna rub off. Now for the inside of the doors, um, I'm again gonna try not to overcomplicate things. So I just add one coat of the darker blue, and then I add just, I stipple a little bit of that lighter blue in there. I'm not being really specific with how it goes on in this case because it's such a small area and then i'm blending it together with my dry brush and i am using my dry brush throughout the entire process of blending after i apply my two colors i use a dry brush just to make sure everything looks good it takes a little bit of the paint off it moves it around um, i'm wiping my dry brush pretty constant so that i'm not getting the colors all muddy um, that dry brush is really important in blending. So you have, like right here, that's the dry brush. It just smooths out that blend. So a very important step that I need to take before I apply a furniture transfer to Terra Clay Paint is I need to seal the piece. If you don't seal the piece before applying the transfer and your paint is wet or your sealer is wet, that transfer is going to pull your paint up and it's gonna be a mess and you're gonna to have to repaint everything. So I always like to wait at like at least 24 hours after applying the sealer to put my transfer on. But honestly, if you could wait longer, that's ideal. Um, I've applied my transfer after 24 hours and it wasn't fully dry because that clay paint reactivates with water. So if it's not completely, completely like hard dry, you, you might have to repaint if you were putting the transfer on. So be careful. Wait 48 hours if you can, that's all. This transfer is called Wildflowers by Redesign with Prima. And it would be awesome if the flowers were growing, like facing downward. That's, I think, what it's meant to be. But for this jewelry box, because I want the, the flower on the front to be going upward, um, I am gonna place these in, going up instead of down. But I love this transfer. I think it's so cool that the flowers face down, just in this case, just for this project. We're gonna make them face up. And after you've applied your transfer, you wanna make sure that you always burnish it. And I have this burnishing pad here I'm using. Um, that's just to make sure that it's on really, really good. Cause if it's not and there's bubbles or anything underneath it, you'll end up with a mess later on. It'll end up, the transfer will pop up. So you wanna make sure everything is burnished and on there really well. And then you wanna seal it, seal that transfer in with your sealer. So then I just have to reapply all of my hardware. And did you notice how that satin sealer deepened the color? If you want the terra clay paint to be a little bit deeper, use a satin sheen. If you want it to be what it looks like um, after you're done painting, then use a flat sheen. And you remember it before the makeover? Here it is after the makeover. I have to say, I love the pink over those two blues. It's just, it's so pretty. If you enjoyed this makeover, I would love it if you hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you next time.